What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today I'm gonna to make a video on what is the best pet snake. Now I get asked this question all the time, mainly at reptile shows, but occasionally I'll get it online or through friends and, and different, different interactions with people. And the common question again is what's the best pet snake? Now for me to just tell you with nothing hands down what the best pet snake is for you, I can't do that. And my opinion on what the best, best pet snake is may be different than what you've heard in the past, may be different than your opinion. So that's okay, but this is my opinion through the years that I've had, the interactions that I've had with different reptiles, what the best pet snake is. And I have a few of them here. So some of them you may not be expecting that I'm going to tell you is a good pet snake. I have different size ranges from really large to really small. So the first snake that I have to give it to as the best pet snake, hands down, it has to be the corn snake. So I'm going to pull out a little corn snake here. This is a male, he's a juvenile, or I should say adult at this point, maybe three years old. Now, I did just feed him, so he has a big lump in here. And my reason for giving this guy at least somewhere up in the top four or five pet snakes is that it, you just can't kill them. You cannot screw up a corn snake. That's my opinion, again, they are very resistant to top temperature fluctuations. So if you have uh, a, a, a difficult environment to, to work with, or if you have a drafty room, things like that, these snakes are definitely hardy, and they're going to last uh, through a lot of different temperatures. They're from North America, and that, I think, plays a huge role into why they're so hardy and very difficult to kill. So they eat readily. As you can see, this guy has a huge male in him, and they very rarely regurge. So you can feed these things, you can make mistakes on these snakes, and they will just thrive and survive and do very well. If you're looking to breed, they also make really interesting and really cool breeding projects. They don't need to bermate, they don't need to hibernate, they can just kind of reduce their temperatures a little bit and throw in a male, in with the female, as long as the female is ready to go, they'll breed. Another cool thing about them is they will double clutch. So if you are breeding, you can get two clutches of eggs within a few months of each other off the same female snake. I very rarely see problems with breeding corn snakes, but they do happen just like any other snake. So keep that in mind. I mean, look at this snake. This snake is literally shedding in my hands. That's how calm corn snakes are. So I don't know if you can see that. I didn't even realize that when I picked this snake up, but the snake is literally shedding in my hands. So Again, they are very adaptable to different climates and temperatures. They eat readily. They get a manageable size. You can get them for a really reasonable price in all different colors and combinations and patterns and things like that. So I really like corn snakes. And I am going to throw this disclaimer that for a very long time, I considered corn snakes like the wussy snake. You don't get a corn snake. That's until somebody gave me a corn snake as a rescue. I think this is so cool, the snake's shedding right in my hands. But that's until somebody gave me a snake as a rescue, and I said, like, why have I not kept corn snakes in the past? These things are super cool. When they're nervous, they actually rattle their tail like a rattlesnake, like many colubrids do, and some snakes, or some boas and pythons do. But I just thought that was a really cool thing, and again, since I've had that, I keep these guys as pets. I have a little breeding project, but as you see, this is, I think this is normal pattern corn snake. So this is like basic as basic can get with corn snakes, and I just think that the pattern of, them, of themselves is super cool. I mean, check out the belly. This guy's in shed, as you can see, shedding right in the camera. So I think it's a cool snake, very good beginner snake, and uh, very manageable, super, super hard to screw up. So that's why I had to give corn snakes definitely up there in some of my favorite snakes and best pet snakes. So the next snake I'm going to talk about is similar to a corn snake, a little bit out of that same realm and element of smaller snakes. Definitely, I would say, fairly, I don't want to say advanced, but a little bit more advanced. This is a black milk snake. So I'm going to use an example of a black milk snake because this is one that I like. But uh, any milk snake and kink snake in general, I'm going to group into the milk snake, kink snake, corn snake category. I had to give a special shout out to this guy. I really like black milk snakes. So these guys, a little bit more jumpy, a little bit flightier, a little, a little more nervous than a corn snake but definitely super manageable. The nice thing about these snakes as well is that if they do bite you, they got really little mouths, so it's not going to really impact anything. This is a female. She's about two years old, and these guys actually start out as like a tricolor snake, uh, a red, black, and white, and she's super nervous and stressed at this point. I don't hold these guys often, super often, but um, 
as you can see, they're they're just really cool snakes in general. So this girl started out as a tricolor, and she is completely black and iridescent, at least almost completely black and iridescent. I think you just got a quick glimpse. So she also just ate, so I don't want to bug her out too much. I'm going to put her back and let her chill out. So by the time they're about two years old, they will completely change to a black coloration or are close to changing to a completely black coloration. I would give a special shout out to the mandarin rat snake that I have behind me, but those guys I feel are a little bit more advanced and are not necessarily the best beginner snakes. The next snake I'm going to show you, which I think you guys knew was going to be off the list at some point, is going to be a boa constrictor. So I'm going to pull out this girl and I tried to pick what I thought was a representative size for a boa constrictor. So this is a female hypo motley boa constrictor. And I, th I think that in my opinion, this is about the average size of a boa. So I'm gonna stand up a little bit. Hopefully you get a little bit more of a view of this. She's maybe six feet. And if I were to guess about eight years old, I've had her since she was a baby, but uh, I have a lot of snakes in here, so I lose track. So she's, she's definitely about eight or nine years old. Uh, fed very well never bred this girl she's just kind of one of those snakes sometimes you get those snakes that just don't breed no matter what you do eventually i'm confident that she'll breed but she's hasn't bred for me yet i've never, certainly tried she just never produces follicles for me so that's kind of part of what comes with with everything eventually she will go and breeding in general is variable why i like boas as pet snakes and specifically per first pet snakes is as I showed you some smaller examples in the in the previous ones that I showed, generally people are going to get bored. They're going to get bored of this small snake and they're going to want to expand and get something bigger. Now, if you're not one of those people and you just want a small snake, then a corn snake, king snake might be perfect for you. Where other people, if they can handle a snake that's a little larger, you know, I'm showing you this, this girl's not huge. I'm, I'm fairly big of a person, but I'm not a monster by any chance. I'm not seven feet tall. So this, she's, uh, you know, again, about five and a half, six feet. I'm terrible. I never measure them. So she's probably closer to six feet, but um, she's very manageable in size. Care for her, it would be in something like a, like a four by two cage would be perfect. Uh, you can always go bigger, but that would be ideal for a snake this size because she's fairly heavy bodied. And I, I really like bow constrictors as first pet snakes because People can inter enjoy the interaction. They almost never have issues with feeding. And to me, that's something that's really important. So when I was raising snakes, the only thing that was available were wild caught ball pythons. And if any of you guys have wild caught ball pythons, you know they can be a real pain in the ass to get to eat. There also weren't things like African soft furs available. So some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Others just forget what I said. But again, why I like boa constrictors, they're very difficult to screw up. They're uh, resilient to all different temperatures and fluctuations and humidities. They certainly do have a range that they like and they should be in, but uh, they, they withstand a lot of different illnesses and ailments that, that uh, may impact some more sensitive species. So again, hard to screw up. They get a reasonable size and they're really just cool snakes. In my opinion, a boa constrictor is probably number one on my first pet snake, assuming that you can manage a snake of this size. Now, again, this could be somebody's first and only pet snake they ever get, and uh, I think that they're perfect. They come in all different uh, sizes as well, so if you wanted something a little bit smaller than this, look into some Central American varieties, maybe Sonorans and other snakes like that that are more of a dwarf species, but otherwise, this is what you're going to get for a, a typical boa imperata, a bi, which is different than a red tail boa, which can get, in my opinion, about the same size. But a lot of people will tell you they get larger, but that's not necessarily true. Some of the huge monster boas you see on Instagram and on, on, on the internet as you're scrolling around, those are the exception. Those are like seeing the seven or eight foot human. I don't know if there's an eight foot human. There probably was at one point. But that's like seeing the exception to the rule and not the average. This girl, I would say, is on average to small average for a female, but for a male, this would be a large male. In my opinion, from what I've seen in the hundreds, if not thousands of boas that I've had, or hundreds that I have. So we're going to put this girl back. She's heavy. Uh, she got me out of breath, which is 
not good because the next snake coming up is even bigger. So this one, I had to throw this snake in here because it's like the classic snake. This is the snake that got me hooked on snakes from here on out. Uh, I'm going to use a hook because this one's not super friendly. But most of the time, these guys will be an awesome, docile and animal that is just awesome. So, pull her out. I gotta kind of pay attention to what I'm doing so I don't get tagged by her because she's not happy right now. But uh, let me grab this girl out. You can hear she's not happy. So, this is a Burmese python. This is a hypo Burmese python. Now, I had to put this snake in the top five of best beginner snakes. Uh, I don't want to say beginner snakes, but best first pet snakes. So as you see, this girl's pretty large. She's not full grown. She's about two, or I should say, she's more like uh, four years old. So I apologize. So she's pretty heavy. She's got me all wrapped up at this point. She's not the friendliest snake. But I love Burmese pythons. I always have. I've always been afraid to get Burmese pythons because I was afraid of how large they get. And many of you guys have watched my other video on Burmese python growth rate. So this girl was actually in it. She was a lot smaller in that video. But uh, in my opinion, Burmese pythons do not get as large as some people say they get. Or as you see on sometimes the internet and other different platforms. She is going in and around right now. So, she, again, she's maybe nine feet at this size. Uh, she's a hypo Burmese python. And why I had to put these guys on the list is because they're just kind of like the classic snake. And if you're looking for a big snake and you want to put your research in and do the, uh, set up the appropriate enclosures and all that fun stuff, have it maybe as your only snake, this is certainly one to consider and to look into. But you do have to be aware that they do get large. And it can be a handful, as you can see, and she's she's going to get a lot larger as she grows. Shouldn't say a lot larger, but she's certainly going to get a couple more feet at minimum. And But she's an awesome, just an amazing snake. I keep using the word awesome because I love Burmese pythons, specifically hypos. So this is uh, just a regular hypo Burmese python. And I've been working with hypos for a while, trying to slowly get kind of the best colors that I can get out of just a normal hypo. So that's all she is. So, I'm going to put her back. All right. And then the last snake that I had to give an honorable mention to is something like this sand boa here. So, this one is a little nervous right from the start. But this one was uh, given to me from a friend who was kind of moving away, couldn't necessarily take care of her anymore. And I think that sand boas are pretty damn awesome snakes. So they become a very manageable size. This is an adult female, full grown, super pretty snakes. The only reason why I didn't put them in the top five or top four snakes that I, whatever, how many I did, is that they can be pretty elusive as sand boas. They like to burrow and hide a lot. So if you're looking for a display snake, you can see their shovel like nose. They'd just be in the sand and the substrate all day. They are sand boas. They typically live in the sand with their nose sticking out, waiting for something to run by, and then they grab it. So I had to not put this in the top snakes, but it can certainly be a really good option. Now, I should do a follow-up video, or I should include a video, or should have included in this video some smaller snakes, uh, some of the babies, I should say. Sand boas as babies can be super tiny. Those things are like little worms. So if you've ever seen a garden worm, that is a sand boa. Burmese pythons as babies they're about this big they're super tiny uh, I don't have any right here otherwise I grab one and then boa constrictors the same deal they're fairly small but they grow to some cool sizes so what snake is best for you do some more research on the temperature requirements don't believe everything you read but certainly there's truth behind something most of the time so hopefully this video was helpful hopefully you guys enjoy keep subscribing keep liking and I'll keep making some videos thanks guys